Well, that was a rather terrific lunch. So I think it's time to get back to doing some assembly. Uh, now I just gotta remember what I was actually doing. By the looks of it, this fan and this duct are the next thing to go on. Instructions, parts. Let's carry on with some building. So as it turns out, the, uh, the question I had regarding the fan, turns out this one is five volts and that is not a problem even though I thought it was going to be the problem because it's five volts. However, this one that was on the previous printer and is being carried over to the new one is 12 volt fan and it looks like I need the proper three pin fan which I don't have. So I might need to get back on the Prusa website and buy a suitable three pin fan because I mean I, I could carry on now so I will carry on probably really but I'm not going to really want to manage all these cables and get everything running because it's a total pain to have to redo all that spiral cable wrap. So yeah, not ideal situation. We'll carry on as we are and see where we get to when it gets to firmware and testing. But I think this will fail the fan test because it doesn't have the third pin for the PWMs, well, for the speed sensing. And it doesn't have a sensor spot on their PCB. So yes, that's going to be a bit interesting. Just as I was adding the pincer sensor, my little fan situation got a little bit worse. So you might be able to see that this connector has just come off. It looks like this one's just about to come off as well. So that fan is basically useless. Don't think I have a proper three pin fan that I can replace it with now. So I'm a little bit stuck. Oh, but the good news is this is finished. So I've now got my genuine replica. I mean, there's no such thing as a genuine replica. Well, maybe there is, but anyway. Uh, so that's all done. That looks very nice. Very happy with that. So I can do the screen even if I can't continue with the extruder. So I definitely don't have one of those fans that I actually need. So I'm going to have to really stop my extruder assembly here, I think. Uh, we probably can go a little bit further, maybe. Let's put this on. That'll make me feel like I'm doing something. Yay, a sock. Even that, even I'm failing at that. There we go. Okay, well, let me have a think about what I'm going to do and I shall get back to you. Okay, so I've just checked the Prusa website for what parts you actually need and what comes in the genuine upgrade kit. I didn't buy the upgrade kit because there's parts in the kit. Well, I'm pretty sure there were parts in the kit that I didn't need for mine because I don't actually have a Prusa, it's just loads of parts. So in that kit, you don't get a different fan. And the original Mark II definitely had a 12 volt two pin fan. So I don't know why there's a three pin fan on the image here, but I think that's a bit misleading. We're gonna just take this fan off, seeing as it's damaged, I'll repair that, but for now, uh, I'm going to replace it with another fan that I should have. I'm pretty sure I just found a bunch of these other 12 volt fans. Here we go, 50 millimeter 12 volt fan. So we'll use this fan instead. It has a connector and a cable and everything that's still in there intact. Uh, the connector is wrong, so that will need changing, but we can do that when we get to doing the whole control board malarkey. And then we can make sure we get the cable lengths right and everything. For now, that old fan is coming off and this one is coming on and then we can actually carry on with the build.
So the whole extruder assembly is really getting there now is I've started to do a bit of the cable management at the back, but there are a few problems that I'm gonna to need to address before I can really finish this. So the Noctua fan being five volts, I thought that was gonna be a problem, it's not. The other problem is that the cable's short. I don't know how I only just really recognized that. I'm pretty sure I saw it earlier, just thought of nothing about it. So that needs to be longer. I don't know why Prusa are selling five volt fans that only have a cable that just meets the back of the extruder. That seems a little bit weird. So I'll, I'll ask them about that. Uh, obviously, I mean, we think the fans should be fine. What was the other thing? There was definitely something else. Oh yes, I need to do, before I do all the spiral wrap, which is kind of the stage that I'm looking at the instructions at the moment, I do need to really check that this is actually gonna fit on this frame because my frame is not actually exactly the same as the original one. Well, the actual frame is very different, but the kind of the cutout where this has to kind of fit through is slightly different. So if this is wider than it should be, then we're gonna have a problem there. I've also just noticed that that cable is a little bit snagging. I think that's all right actually. Should be fine. So some problems there. I'm gonna to have to contact Prusa support and I'm gonna go do that now actually. And then I shall report back when that is done. So we've got a little bit more information now, having done a little bit of research. Ooh, that was a bit lower than I expected about what the parts are that I actually bought and where I got them from. Because I started doing this a little while ago and it all got delayed by months. So I had forgotten what I'd got. As you can tell, well, you can't see, but as I can tell by looking at these motors, they say Zaribo on them. And it turns out that is where I bought a lot of these parts. So like the V2 Pinder probe, the Noctua fan, uh, all of the motors, they were all, and even the bed. Yep, it says Zaribo on it, nice and big. That is, excuse me. That is where I got all of these parts from. So evidently, I can't blame Prusa for that at all. So the reason that this is short is because I tried to save some money by buying it from somewhere else and now it's gonna be a bit of ball lake to take this sleeving off, cut these wires back, put a connector, well, I'm gonna to have to solder or connect some wires on there to splice in something a little bit longer and then take that to the control board where I believe the, the uh, RPM sensing actually has to be split as well. So that's a whole nother load. Of, that's now what I'm gonna to have to deal with in order to get this working how it's supposed to. But I am right with the original fan, the other, the part cooling fan rather. That is still a two pin 12 volt but the other one is actually okay, apparently, to be five volts, which is weird, seeing as it's originally 12 volts, I'm pretty sure. Either way, I don't have to take any of this apart, really. I just need to do a bit of rewiring to get this to be the right thing, and basically everything else to be the right thing. So just need to cut that end off, take a bit of that sleeving off, because I just don't need it, and then hopefully we'll be good to go. Right, so I'm gonna get on with a whole load of wiring business now. I've got a whole load of other wiring stuff I need to do, or maybe we'll assemble it onto the printer first and then do the wiring after. Not totally decided. It's probably easier to do, not on the printer, but uh, well, it's probably easier to do when it's not assembled onto anything, but it's a bit late for that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do some wiring connectors and stuff, and I will see you back when I've done that. Do you ever have one of those moments where you do something drastic like cut the ends of a connector off and then realize you already had a really easy alternative that you could have used? So what I was gonna do with this is uh, solder on some extension wires onto it. But the problem with doing that is you then got solder terminals which are hard and brittle right in the middle of your moving kind of cable, uh, which is not good. So I just cut the ends off ready to do all that soldering and then realized I had a bunch of, well, this actually doesn't have the right connectors. I left the correct connectors one in the thing because I don't need it now. But I had one with the exact right connector that I could have just literally plugged in and taken to the control board, which would have solved the problem in like 10 seconds. But no, I had to cut the end off like an idiot. So now we're gonna go with a different extension wire that hopefully will be just about, I don't think it's gonna be long enough. Um, what can we test with that I know is the right length? See, whatever I 
Yeah. So this came not long enough, so we're going to have to use this one. But we're going to have to do a whole solder job, which is... I mean, I could put a connector back on the end of this, I suppose. Trouble is, I don't really also want a connector in the middle of the whole, like, cable drag chain thing. The cable, this thing, I've forgotten what it's called. Cable spiral wrap, that's the one. Because, again, it's going to be flexing constantly, so... Well, with the connector, it's not going to get damaged, but it's it makes this really difficult to put on and leaves you with this big weird bulge in the middle of it. I suppose that's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah. I think it's better than having a, a solder terminal right in the middle of it. So I'm going to put some connectors, cut one end off this, put some connector on that, put a connector on here that will connect to that, connect that to that. It's a totally different wire gauge as well. And then that can go to the control board and we'll probably have to redo this end anyway. So more connectors there. Oh, well. Right, I'm going to get on with that. I shall see you back in a moment. So I got that um, kind of crimped on. It's not perfect, but I think it should do. Uh, it'll be certainly enough to get it running, I think, for now. If I do choose to change it and get rid of this horrible spiral wrap sometime in the future, then I shall do it then. I've also cable tied all that uh, kind of cable management bit at the back of the extruder now. I need to cut off the excess, but otherwise looking pretty good. Uh, so the next Part of the plan is to one fit this LCD cover to the front of the LCD to replace that horrible black one that I don't want anymore. Uh, also get some of the rods and motors into that. Get this onto the frame. So basically it's like the get everything onto the frame sort of time now. So including the bed assembly, that LCD and this extruder set. So let's get on with that. So that's it from me today on the Mark IIS upgrade build. For now, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. There'll be a link in the description. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that. And I will see you in the next one.